And so um, that was basically the point that I wanted to make. And uh, it's not about political correctness, and I think this is a really important point for women. It's not, oh, let's just be nice because it, 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 it doesn't really matter for outcomes. It's just like, let's be nice to the girls because it makes us feel good. No, that's, that's not the point. The point is that it's in our self-interest. And I think it's really important for women to internalize that. It makes a difference. It makes our community stronger. It makes our businesses work better. It makes our government more representative when there are women. So it's, it's really about making a better future for everybody. It's not about one woman and her ambition and her power, although that's all great. I think that's all great. But I think a lot of women will step back. I, I can't tell you how I interview a lot of women. I, I ask almost every one of them, do you think you're powerful? And almost to a woman, they said no. I don't think of myself that way. I like to think of myself as influential, but not powerful. And I think that's a really uh, revealing um, sort of notion because we, we want to be able to change the world, but it can't be about our own power. Now, I think we need to rethink that a little bit, but um, it's, it, it, so it has to be about the power to do what, right? Because we think of, the reason people, women shy away from that is, you think of powerful men, and it's the power and ambition seem to be self-directed for, for a lot of us. I think we look at that and think, Powerful men want power so they can be powerful, you know. Um, but when you start talking about empowering women to accomplish something that's important to all of us, then I think women start to think about it a little bit differently. So in a nutshell, that's what that's what I mean by women ruling the world. It's not in place of men; it's alongside of men. And the reason is not because it's the nice, politically correct thing to do; it's because it's going to make the world better. And I believe it already, it clearly already is. I mean, there's no question about that. Um, you know, um, Kirsten Gillibrand, the United States Senator from New York, is a friend of mine, and she was t- telling the other day that when she was in the House, this is just one small example, before she was in the Senate, uh, Nancy Pelosi was Speaker, and she appointed five women to the Armed Services Committee. First time there had been anywhere, there had never been more than two, and Nancy put five women on the Armed Services Committee. Um, and, sh- and, and Kirsten said she was one of them. She said, all of a sudden, we start, started talking not only about what hardware and what kind of weapons and, and support are, are fighting men and women needed on the battlefield. We start talking about, are they getting the health care they need? Are they getting the emotional support before, during, and after battle? Are their families being taken care of? And do they know that so that they can, that while they're focusing on defending our nation, that their families are being cared for at home? She said, it wasn't that what they were doing wasn't important, but it wasn't the whole story. And she said, the agenda of that committee dramatically changed. Um, and I think that, you know, apply that a thousand different ways across the world. Um, and you see how women being in the room and at the table and having a voice and a decision-making uh, authority c- makes all the difference. Well, I think this has been kind of an interesting conversation, a fabulous conversation. What I've been thinking about is I've heard your parents look at each other and go, did you see that comment with our daughters? Did you? you I imagine your parents go, what happened? You know, they're writing over clothes. No. Yeah. they're, you know, writing books, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know my mother was always very confused by it. Actually, they really pay no attention to us now that we have children. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They're like, hi, how are you? Where's the grandkids? Yeah. 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 Which is is as it should be. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've got time for a couple of questions. So, yes, ma'am. I have a comment about what you were just saying. Um, It's very interesting because as young girls become young adults and grown women, even just taking compliments and feeling good about themselves and empowering women to have good feelings, I love your jacket. It's beautiful. Oh, this old thing? I just took it out of the closet. I mean, we yeah. I talk about women, this all the time. Yeah. Yes. 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 Children to feel good about themselves, and it goes along with bullying. Yes. And that leadership role that right. they can be empowered and that they can feel good about themselves and they can be strong. And I think just from the very grassroots, let alone sitting at a table and bringing that feminine side to post traumatic stress for the military, right. all the suicide that's happening. Right. They come home. What happens? They go to Walter Reed. They get taken care of. What happens to their families? But I think this women's input is huge. And right. I have a, a job where I deal with men. I'm in sales with a dental field. It's very male-driven, and I can see when we have our meetings, the women is reacting very, very differently, and it's just a whole different thought process. So I think you guys are both on to some huge, huge ideas. I think it starts at a very, very young age with our children. Mm. Okay, we'll go over here. Well, I, I have a question that sort of follows along with your thinking. I work in a male-dominated field as well. Actually, Hillary Clinton is my ultimate, ultimate boss. Ah. But um, uh, what suggestions do you have for us when there are times I feel like my instincts are better, I think I could do a better job in leadership, but I'm several layers below a number of men, 
uh, in the diplomatic corps, and I don't, you know, what suggestions do you have for how we can, you know, go forward? Because it's still quite a few layers in many of our lives before we'll be in places that we we can be powerful and not just influential. Right. I'll, I'll make a couple of suggestions, yeah. and then I'm sure Betts has some. Um, I think what's really, I think what, I think you're totally onto something that women. One of one of the things we do, we don't own our value, right? We don't take credit for what we do. And I think it's really important in your workplace that you make sure people know. It doesn't have to be braggy, but you have to let people know what you've accomplished. Um, it, you know, I think it, 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 right down to women, you say to a woman, I like your coat, or that was really great, that project you just finished. And people, the women start with the worst thing about it. You know, it just, there was a, there was a, one of the sessions really went badly. And not, not enough people, you know, it's like you always go right to the, yeah. where, instead of saying, Thank you. We really worked hard, and here's what we accomplished. Right? You know, nobody expects you to be perfect. So I think you have to start with owning what you accomplish, o owning what you what you bring, and knowing what the value is, and then making sure that other people do it. The other thing is you have to make sure your voice is heard. And I'm sure everyone in this room has had the experience where you're in a meeting with all or mostly men, and you say something, and everyone ignores you, and about 10 seconds later, a man says the exact same thing <laughs> yeah. and everyone says what a great idea it is so I came across this woman who had a, a solution which was she said oh that happens to me all the time here's what I do I go Bob I love the way you restated my idea <laughs> <laughs> you are you really you really nailed it you really you're so, you're so smart <laughs> Just yeah. Yes. That yeah. Was really yeah. yeah. Um, and since everyone agrees that that my idea is really, I think, beautifully summed up by Bob here, it is is a good idea. Let's you know. Yeah. So it's it's a way of taking back the credit without necessarily denying that Bob had a nice resummary of your idea. <laughs> um, so, but so I think we need to share strategies about that. Like, how do you deal with not being heard? How do you deal with not getting credit for your accomplishments? How do you make sure that you're being paid what you're worth? I mean, one of the reasons we're paid less than men is because we don't ask. Right. Um, and that becomes just one example of how we don't own our value. Um, and it starts very young. With, I think it starts with our girls, and we need to make sure that they yeah. learn from us that it's okay to be proud of what you've accomplished with your team, you know, but nonetheless. Right, and the, their confidence. And, I, I mean, I, for me, the, the, the working in all male-dominated places, the only suggestion that I really... I talk about this a little bit in the book, but it, it's about you have to build relationships with the men. Uh, and sometimes you have to be, I always say, like, if you choose to be in whatever job you choose to be in, and I just spent, I, I visited, visited eight different companies in the high-tech world in San Francisco, and really male-dominated, and, you know, these women are struggling out there, but, so what I say is, if you choose to be in this company, you know, you choose to work for Chevron, and it's very male-dominated, what do you need to do to be successful, and how do you be strategic in that place, if you choose to be there, right, and uh, part of that is building relationships with men that will help you get your voice heard, and sometimes you aren't the one to, if you need something done, you're not the one to carry, carry it, someone else can carry it for you, but you have to be strategic and willing to say, you know, am I the best voice on this, or is my friend over there, can he help me bring that vision or, or that idea to the table? Uh, so, you know, where are you and what do you need to be successful? And I just have to tell one quick story about our little girls, uh, talking about this girls, um, <laughs> which I love this story because m my daughter, as I told you, has gentle feelings. And, um, <laughs> Dee Dee's my daughter, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Dee Dee's daughter, Kate, is, well, my daughter, Dee Dee's daughter is two years older than Madison, so in Ma Maddie's mind, Kate is hung the moon. But a couple years ago, we went, Maddie and I went to visit Dee Dee and her family and Dee Dee had some friends over that had little boys and the kids were all sitting around the table having dinner and these little boys uh, had never met Madison and they were teasing her about her name and they started to call her Dingle Floop and you're Dingle Floop and she got very upset and her gentle feelings and ran upstairs crying and so as the mom I went up after her and to try to co comfort her of course she you know how sometimes you can't comfort your own kid right so we're sitting on Kate's bed and I'm like Maddie it's okay and so all of a sudden, up the stairs <laughs> comes Miss Kate, who was nine at the time, with her hands on her hips. And she looks over Madison and she says, Madison, she said, you cannot let those boys ruin your night. <laughs> and, uh, and then she wow. said, and you know what? They think they're so smart. They don't even know how to spell dingle floop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then she goes, and Madison, you can never let anyone make you feel you're not as special as you are. Oh, wow. oh, then then she reached out, took Maddie's hand, and said, let's go back down stairs. And Maddie got up off the bed 
and went back downstairs to face the boys. <laughs> but I said to Kate later, and we've talked about it several times, and it's the story in the book, is that, you know, I said to her, you know what, that, you were mentoring Madison. That's what it's all about, right? It's as women, you know, the confidence that Kate feels. And I said to her, six months later, we were visiting my folks, and I said, Kate, I still, I want to write about this, and I interviewed her, and um, she said, well, yeah, Auntie, you know what? You can never let anyone make you feel you're not as special as you are. And I said, if you keep up that attitude, you're going to have a kick-ass life. <laughs> because something happens uh, with us as women. And Kofi Annan actually was interviewed, and said, they asked him, why didn't you have more women in, in senior roles? And he, as you know, here you are, this man from Africa, blah, blah. And he said, all across my time uh, uh, there at the UN, he said, every time there was a job opening, I would always want the most qualified person. He said, every time I approached a woman and said, you should apply for this job, they would say to me, universally, I'm, are you sure? I don't know if I have the qualifications. You think I can do it? He said, never once in my career did a man say <laughs> anything else but thank you, I will apply. Right. And that's what I think we have to look at as women is what is this whole issue around confidence and why do we keep ourselves back and, and what do we do about that and how do we teach our girls? No question.